This morning for our scripture reading, we turn to the book of Psalms, to Psalm 93. This is the word of the Lord from Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The world that we live in today is a broken and troubled place. It doesn't take much for us to find this out, and especially in the current global climate that we are living in. In fact, it seems that everything we hear lately is all doom and gloom, especially for the past two and a half months. All we've heard about over the last two and a half months is about the coronavirus or COVID-19, and everything seems to be sad and coming from a position of fear. So it seems as if the sky is falling, the world is coming to an end, or it's at least in complete chaos. Not only do we hear of this chaos in the whole world around us in general, but there's also chaos in our own personal lives. Some of us are struggling with sickness or illness, and that creates chaos and turmoil in our life. Some of us are facing situations in our families that are difficult and we don't know how to reconcile what is going on. Some of us are dealing in our families with brokenness, with hurt and and betrayal. Maybe even in our own personal lives, we're, we're broken people. And it seems like life is just in complete and utter chaos. In the midst of turmoil and chaos, we might often wonder, is God really in control? Or is it the the chaos, the turmoil that's running the show and, and taking control of our life? Sometimes it feels as if life is out of control and that we have no way of stopping it at times. It feels like sometimes in life there's one storm after the next. Just when we think we're out of the turmoil and chaos, that it's over, another wave comes and crashes on us, causing our lives to be in upheaval again. Our passage today, as we are celebrating the theme of ascension, ascension of Jesus as he was with his disciples and as Luke and Acts tell us, he ascended to heaven before their very eyes. And our passage helps to speak to the question of who is in control. Does the chaos and the turmoil of life rule and reign in our lives? Or is God Almighty, the King, in control? On Ascension Day, we celebrate that for 40 days after Easter... For 40 days, Jesus was with his disciples, and on that 40th day, he ascended to heaven. The one who was victorious over the grave is now sitting at God's right hand. In Colossians 3, verse 1, it tells us, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God. This is our assurance that Christ is seated at God's right hand. And our passage from Psalm 93 speaks to the fact that the Lord is king. So in the midst of chaos, in the midst of turmoil in your life, and in the world around us, we hear the psalmist proclaim, the Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. 
It says the Lord reigns. Other translations have it, the Lord is king. No matter which way you look at it, the Lord reigns or the Lord is king, we know that the Lord is in control. Even though there's chaos and turmoil outside and all around us, the Lord is king. And we hear that the Lord reigns and we will see how he is in control of all things. In fact, in our psalm, it speaks to the fact that the Lord reigns now, he reigns in the past, and he will reign in the future forever. We will see how he reigns in heaven, he reigns on earth, and he will reign forever. Looking at those first two verses from Psalm 93, as we've already heard, the Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The Lord reigns. The Lord is king. And when we celebrate the ascension of Jesus, our risen Lord, we celebrate that he is now sitting at God's right hand. And we celebrate that enthronement that he is sitting in the place where he belongs, the place that he left to come to be like us. In Philippians 2, we hear that famous passage where Jesus took on our likeness. He, He humbled himself. He took on the likeness of a servant and humbled himself to the point of death on the cross. But then it says, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. He exalted Jesus and he placed him in the highest place. He didn't place him higher than himself, but he placed him in his rightful place. He simply restored him to the place where he was before from all time. When he ascended to heaven, he was going back to where he was supposed to be. So when we hear in the psalm that the Lord reigns, it's an important point. That the Lord Jesus, the the one who is victorious over the grave, is now sitting on his throne. And the psalm says that this throne was established long ago, and it points to us that this is an enduring reign. The psalm tells us you are from all eternity. That God, this this God is not just some local deity that a, a local village worships. You see, in the ancient Near East, oftentimes villages and tribes of people had their own deities. They had their own gods that they worshiped. And sometimes they came and they went. But that's not the God who reigns that the psalmist is talking about. This was the creator God, the God who established the world, the one who is from all eternity. Not some local God that is worshipped for a time and then soon forgotten about. But we, we praise and we worship a God who is sitting on his throne that was established long ago from all eternity. And so when we celebrate Jesus' ascension, we're recognizing that he is going back to his rightful place where he's been from all eternity. It's not a new thing that Jesus is king. In fact, John 1 tells us that Jesus was with God from the beginning. As John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Jesus, God's word, the word of God, was with God in the beginning. So he too is from all eternity. His ascension to the throne is not a new thing. It's going back to where he belonged, his proper place. And his death and his resurrection indicate that he has proper authority over those things. That he was victorious over death. And he was able to rise again, and then as he is seated at the right hand of God, he is the king over all things. His throne is firmly established in the heavens. 
And he is from eternity, and he who is from eternity continues to reign. But not only does he reign in heaven above, but he reigns on the earth below. In the middle set of verses, we hear that there was a sort of rebellion, a a mutiny or a coup attempt on the rightful king. A mutiny or a coup when people are trying to rise up and they're rebelling against the proper governing authorities. In that middle section of verses, we see this coup attempt. We see a major contrast between the powers of the seas versus the power of Yahweh, the Lord. Verse 3 tells us, The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. We have to make some important notes here at verse 3. First of all, the word that is translated the seas can also be translated as rivers or floods. The seas and floods and rivers represents chaos. That is why there is so much fear in Bible times of the seas, of the rivers, of the floods. Because it represents chaos. It's an important note for us to have a picture of a flood. And when we think of floods and we, when we think of rivers flowing at high capacity, there's a lot of power behind that water. So I want you to think about some floods Some recent floods in in our area in High River a number of years ago. Or we think about not not that many years ago, the, the overland flooding that affected many of us in Tabor and the surrounding communities. Water's a powerful force. Or if you think about pictures you see on the news after hurricanes and the flooding that often happens after hurricanes. Or if we think of the tsunami that happened in the Southeast Pacific years ago. And if you think of those images from the news and the destruction that the tsunami brought and the destruction that hurricanes bring, it's powerful images. People didn't stand a chance. Buildings never stood a chance. For the seas lifted up the floods and the torrents and and the tsunami. And it's amazing how much power is in water. It's something to be feared. So we have to think about seas and, and floods and rivers representing chaos. And the other thing we have to note here is the image of the sea for the original audience. The sea was actually a god that people worshipped. Because there was so much power in water, they worshipped the sea god to try to appease him or her. They worshipped the sea god. So when we hear the psalmist say, the seas have lifted up, the sea god is rising up against Yahweh, the Lord, the creator of all. There's a rebellion. There's a coup attempt against God. But then verse 4 gives us assurance. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. It didn't matter how much rebellion grew in strength or grew in numbers. It didn't matter how high they raised up. For the Lord God Almighty is the mighty one. Its powers were nothing compared to the power of God. So we have these images in our minds of seas, of floods, and we have this image of the sea being a God. And then we think about Jesus and his encounters on the sea. Some of the stories of Jesus on the Sea of Galilee gives us depictions of Jesus as God who is over the sea. If you think about the story when Jesus walks on water, and again, that image of the sea as a God that was to be feared and to be worshipped, and here is Jesus walking on top of water. It stood no chance. Then think about the time when Jesus is in the boat with his disciples, 
crossing the Sea of Galilee and a storm comes up on the sea, the disciples become terrified and afraid and Jesus is sleeping. So the, the terrified disciples wake Jesus up and they, they t- they're afraid for their life and, and he's not even sure what they're afraid of. So he speaks to the storm. He calms the wind, he calms the waves, and the disciples are in awe for what he's just done. Even the wind and the waves obey him, they say. We hear the power of the sea, but yet Jesus speaks, and it goes calm. The power of the sea is not even comparable to the power of the Almighty, the King who reigns in heaven and on earth. Not only does he reign in heaven, he reigns on earth, but he also reigns forever. The last verse says, your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. Even though there was a mutiny attempt, even though there was a coup attempt on the right rulership, God is still mighty. It didn't compare to the power of the Almighty. It tells us God's law stands firm. God's rule is forever. His laws are for endless days. It's the foundation of his kingdom. It cannot be shaken. Because the Lord reigns, his throne is firmly established. He has power over the chaos of the world. And his statutes stand firm for endless days. When Jesus came to this earth, when he took on our human flesh, he was inaugurating his kingdom here on earth. John the Baptist preached before Jesus saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. After Jesus was baptized by John, Jesus also went out preaching the same message. And then he calls disciples to him and he enables them to carry on this message that the kingdom of heaven is near. And he enables them to grow his kingdom. After his death and resurrection, he was with them. He was empowering them and then he ascends to heaven. But he promised to return again to bring the new heavens and the new earth. And then he will reign forever. And he will be with us forever. In Revelation 19 verses 6 through 8, it says that he will come again and we will celebrate his reign forever. It says, hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Hallelujah, the Lord Almighty reigns. He reigns in heaven, he reigns on earth, and he will reign forever. So as we think about the ascension of Jesus, we think about how does that impact us as well? Again, the Heidelberg Catechism asks a very personal question about how does that impact us? Question and answer 49 asks, How does Christ's ascension to heaven benefit us? And the answer says, first, he is our advocate in heaven in the presence of his Father. Second, we have our own flesh in heaven as a sure pledge that Christ, our head, will also take us, his members, up to himself. And third, he sends his spirit to us on earth as a corresponding pledge By the Spirit's power, we seek not earthly things, but the things above where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. You see, we have our advocate in heaven. He is there, sitting at God's right hand, interceding for us. We have our own flesh there as well, which is a pledge that he will come back to take us to be with him forever. And as a result, we have his spirit with us as well. We have his presence with us, helping us to put our minds on things above, not on earthly things. 
So when it seems like life is out of control or it's in complete chaos, when the storms of life or the seas have been lifting up, trying to mount a coup attempt on your life, trying to say that they are in control, we have assurance that Jesus is sitting at God's right hand. That he is reigning from heaven above and on the earth in the midst of what is going on around us. In the midst of the storms, he is reigning. That no matter what we face, we have the assurance that he will come again to take us to be with himself. And he sends his spirit so that we have his presence. The Lord is king. He reigns in heaven above and he reigns on the earth below. And he will reign forever. Even in the midst of the storms of life, in the midst of life's chaos and in turmoil, the Lord is king. Shall we pray together? Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you that you are king and that you reign. No matter what we face in this life, no matter the storms, no matter the turmoil, No matter the chaos, you are mightier than all things. And because your son ascended and is sitting at your right hand, we have him as a pledge, but also we have him interceding for us. And Lord, we also have your spirit present among us. And so Lord, we pray that through your spirit's power, we may look to things above the things that you would have us think about. And Lord, may we look to you for the one who is in control of all things, especially in the midst of chaos and the turmoils of life. Lord, for those who are struggling, for whatever reason, Lord, we pray for this as a comfort for them. To know that you are king and that you will reign now and forever. Amen.